Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this exclusive webinar where we're excited to introduce you to our brand new CDSS training course. I'm Dean Kutsia, the recently appointed CIO at EPI, and I'll be your host for today's session. For those of you joining us for the first time, EPI's expertise spans data center audits, certifications, and industry specific training, and making us a trusted global partner in the industry for over 36 years now. The CDSS training course is designed for IT facilities and data center professionals uh, with the intention to equip them with the skills to enhance the efficiency and environmental sustainability of their data centers and the facilities they operate. Joining us today will be Mr. Otto Daru, um, who will be presenting the CDSS training course to you. Otto is one of our most accomplished trainers and he's been part of the EPI team for over 12 years now. And with over 30 years experience in the industry, Otto has fulfilled many senior operational roles at one time managing over 100 megawatts of capacity across 35,000 square meters of white space. With that, I'd, I'd like to hand over to, to Otto. Okay, thank you, Dean. Um, so everybody, welcome. Um, I really love to have you all here. Hey? We have a lot of participants. Uh, as uh, I was already introduced, uh, my name is Otto, Otto de Roo, and um, I'm today giving to you today an overview of the content of the Certified Data Center Environmental Sustainability Specialist course. Uh, this, of course, in order to give you an impression what to expect from this training. Uh, I really hope that you will enjoy this preview. So during this preview, I will give you uh, an overview of the content. And of course, I will also show you a few uh, sample slides. Um, so let's see if I can get the screen moving. Yes. So um, CDCS is actually a two day training. Um, the primary audience for this course is actually any IT uh, facilities or data center professional who works in and around the data center and who has the responsibility to achieve and improve the efficiency and environmental sustainability of the data center whilst maintaining, of course, the uh, required availability and manageability of the data center. Um, Participants should have at least one or two years uh, experience in the data center or the data center facilities and environment. Uh, it is actually recommended to do a CDCP training prior to the CDESS training uh, because the CDESS will also go more into detail in the data center facility aspects and maybe without CDCP or any other equivalent knowledge, huh? the participant may not be able to gain the full benefits of the CDESS training. As I mentioned, um, we have a two-day training. And to give you an overview of the content of the first day, we will start off with the impact of data centers on the environment. Then we will continue in the second module, explaining the concept of environmental sustainability. What do we actually mean with that? In the third module, it is all about environmental management. And in module four, we will focus on the data center greenhouse gas emissions. The fifth module will cover the concept of well, most of people, most of you might already know this: the concept of the PUE. Huh? power uses effectiveness, but now, of course, we are going to go into a greater detail. And in the fifth part of today's uh, or uh, the first day's um, uh, training, we are going to give you guidance on how to achieve electrical energy savings on the power infrastructure, but we will also go into uh, the electrical energy savings, of course, in the cooling infrastructure of the data center, but we will most um, uh, commonly, we will need to do this on day two, yeah, because uh, uh, saving electricity or electrical power on cooling, uh, there are many different options. And that is actually quite a large module. Module seven and eight 
is showing how to manage the electrical energy savings on uh, ICT equipment and your data storage. Water management will be covered by module 9 and module 10 will address waste management. In module 11, uh, we will go into the usage of sustainable energy. And finally, in module 12, we will explain how automated environmental management systems can help you to achieve the environmental sustainability goals of your data center. Um, to become a certified data center environmental sustainability specialist, you will need to pass an exam, which is actually uh, common for all EPI trainings. And the CDESS exam is a closed book exam. And there will be 40 multiple choice questions, and you will have one hour to com complete the exam. Passing mark of the exam is 68%. So in other words, you will need to have uh, 27 correct answers out of those uh, 40 questions. So even when you're making uh, 13 mistakes during the exam, you will still uh, pass the exam. Um, to go into the actual content of, of the training, in module one, we will cover the impact of data centers on the environment. Um, we will discuss the prediction that was made in 2010 by some scientists who created a model for the future data center power usage. Uh, we will also give you an update on the current situation and of course, nobody can predict the future, but we will try to give you an outlook and uh, the required uh, commitment for the coming years when it comes to sustainability. Um, well, actually, uh, in 2010, according to this model, uh, data centers would be using around 3 to 13% of the global electricity in 2030 eh, compared to 1% in 2010. Of course, this worst case scenario is extreme. However, at that time, um, it was not seen as a totally unrealistic scenario. Eh? These scenarios that are presented here, they became very popular and triggered the data center industry to focus on energy efficiency from, of course, both a cost, both a cost, but also from an environmental impact perspective. Anyway, um, the Paris Agreement was actually, which is now in, in force, is a legally binding international treaty on climate change yeah so this uh, paris agreement is focusing on the limitation of global warming in cdess we will also show how the paris agreement has set the benchmark for many regional but also country specific regulations for data centers energy efficiency is already for more than 10 years on the agenda. So now we need to do actually a step further and we now need to address environmental sustainability where uh, CDESS will show you how you can become uh, as a data center carbon neutral and even how to achieve the target of net zero emissions. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Then we have module two, huh, where we um, are going, amongst others, uh, into the definitions of various levels of environmental sustainability. Um, uh, we are also going to address the importance of sustainability and the required uh, commitment of senior management. Uh, the environmental sustainability framework, uh, sustainability, uh, sustainable policies and the performance standards and metrics will also be covered in this module. Another part of this module uh, are, uh, uh, are uh, addressing the uh, required information policies for environmental uh, reporting. Uh, 
to actually show transparency and to create awareness by uh, the stakeholders of the data center, huh? including obviously the end users. Um, we will give some examples of various surface charging models that could be helpful in creating awareness by the end user of the data center. Uh, here's an example of a few definitions that are used to express different levels of environmental sustainability. Um, this slide shows you actually a list of the most used metrics to indicate the sustainability performance of data centers. Uh, we will uh, address uh, all those KPIs in uh, detail in the relevant modules of CDESS and how these parameters are measured, uh, reported, and of course, uh, improved. Module three will cover environmental management. Um, here we will go into the purpose of an environmental sustainability frame framework where we go into a standard like the ISO 14001. Uh, we will also uh, uh, give examples of various other standards and guidelines where uh, we will go, for instance, into the ISO IEC 30134 and uh, ISO 50001. Yeah. In this uh, module, we will also go into the measurement and measurement cate uh, categories for your data center's sustainability performance. Um, we will discuss measurement baselining, trend analysis, and of course, reporting on the outcome of those measurements. In the data center sector, uh, many people are not aware that uh, key performance indicators uh, regarding the data center environmental sustainability already have been defined and published by uh, ISO, the International uh, Standards Organization. So uh, during the training, we will actually cover all the ISO IEC 30,134 KPIs uh, in the relevant modules of this training. Um, we will also address the purpose and the use of a data center efficiency model. And because data centers, have, they are using a lot of electrical power. We will obviously uh, go uh, through the various types of energy metering and how to implement this in your data center and where to measure the energy consumption. Um, Module four is about the data center greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we are not only talking about energy efficiency, but also on uh, the re reduction of the carbon footprint of the data center. So here we will cover the usage of the CO2 equivalent. Uh, we will explain the three scopes for greenhouse gas emissions, the definitions for those various emission scopes. We will also provide examples on how to calculate the carbon emissions from the electrical grid, the backup generator, but also refrigerant leakage, and also uh, the KPI, the carbon usage effectiveness, is part of module four. Explanation will be given on the three scope emissions as they how they are defined by the Greenhouse Gas Protocol Corporate Standard. Eh? So we will go uh, very much in detail into scope one, scope two, and scope three. Um, CUE is a metric uh, to understand the carbon dioxide emissions equivalents or CO2e from energy associated with a data center. Yeah. And obviously, we will give some examples of those CUE calculations uh, in this module. Um, this slide actually shows you an example how to calculate the carbon emissions that are coming from the leakage or usage of refrigerants, eh? for instance, from your chillers or air conditioning units. 
Module 5 is, of course, about power usage effectiveness. Eh? PUE, or power usage effectiveness, is, I think, the most used KPI when it comes to data center energy efficiency and su sustainability. So in this module, we will go into the power usage effectiveness where we will explain the PUE measurement levels. Uh, we are going to talk about factors which could uh, affect the PUE. Uh, we will uh, 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 point out what are the measurement uh, locations, at what intervals do you need to do measurements, and we will also cover the PUE in a mixed source environment, and that means those are data centers that not only use electrical energy, but maybe also, for instance, chilled water. We are also going to explain how to measure the PUE in a mixed use building. So uh, think about a multi-tenant building. We will address PUE re reporting, the impact of the PUE after optimizing the IT load. And finally, uh, we will explain some of the PUE derivatives. Um, well, as most people already might know, have, PUE is the total facility power divided by the total ICT power. Yeah. So in this module, we will give details on the benefits and limitations of PUE as a metric and also how the PUE should be measured and reported. Um, this slide shows you the three defined categories or levels, as they call it, um, defined for the PV measurement as it is specified by the ISO 30134 standard. Next module, module six, is all about electrical energy savings on the data center power infrastructure. Um, in this module, we are going to identify where we can start to save energy in our electrical infrastructure. We will go into the sizing of the power infrastructure. Uh, we will also address the potential usage of DC power. Uh, we will discuss the environmental impact of generators. Um, the selection and sizing of UPS systems will be part of this module. And uh, we will discuss uh, the effect of improving the power factor and also, well, the installation of energy savings, uh, saving lights in the data center. Um, so in order to save energy, of course, we need to know where the uh, electrical uh, energy consumption actually takes place in the data center. Huh? So we are going to inv investigate the various components that are using energy in a typical data center. As I mentioned already earlier in CDESS, we will also go into the advantages, but also the limitations of using DC power in a data center environment. Module six is of course all about electrical energy savings on the cooling infrastructure. So temperature and humidity set points will be covered in this module as well as uh, various energy efficient cooling te te technologies. We will also give some practical tips for energy savings on the airflow. Uh, we will also address various forms of liquid cooling, but also the energy reuse in the form of waste heat and its implications for the power usage effectiveness and the energy reuse effectiveness will be explained in this module. So we will also explain how the effect uh, of raising the cold aisle temperature and its impact on air side free cooling. As I mentioned, uh, we will also go to various types of uh, liquid cooling systems, um, like we show here an example of a one phase or single phase immersion cooling system. Then module eight. Module eight is all about um, 
energy savings on the IT and network equipment. Eh? Uh, to be honest, uh, the largest portion of energy consumption is actually done by the ICT en environment. So uh, we will address the IT equipment procurement process and what considerations you need to take into account when you are purchasing in, in order to purchase energy efficient IT equipment. We will also explain parameters like the IT equipment energy efficiency and the IT equipment utilization. Um, also, the advantages of server virtualization will be discussed in this module. Furthermore, we will give you information on the open compute project where environmental sustainability is one of their main targets. Um, well, um, there are, of course, um, uh, multiple uh, key performance indicators for IT energy efficiency. Uh, here we are showing a slide how to calculate the IT equipment utilization for servers. But of course, uh, other parameters will also be covered in this module. Here um, we have a picture of an, uh, uh, a system um, based on the Open uh, Computer Project or OCP, as it is more commonly known. Uh, here we will explain how this new technology uh, can help your business uh, to Im improve not only the efficiency, but also some other important factors, eh? uh, like avoiding the risk of uh, vendor login. Um, of course, um, module nine is all about energy savings on data storage. Unfortunately, we are saving uh, more and more data every time, yeah? And the amount of energy uh, consumed by uh, data storage is actually uh, increasing uh, very rapidly. Um, so we are going to explain the principle of data management. Eh? We will also talk about data storage management. So how to keep the amount of data uh, reasonable and useful for the business. Uh, we're also going into the energy efficiency for the various data storage equipment. Yeah, uh, Here's an example uh, for an energy efficient data storage management uh, where we are going, for instance, um, uh, explaining the concept of thin pro 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 provisioning, but also other technologies will be addressed in this training. Um, we will also go on the hardware side eh, where we explain the advantages and disadvantages of different types of data storage equipment, eh? uh, amongst others, uh, SSD, uh, tape storage, etc. cetera. Uh, data centers might also use a lot of water, yeah? And water management is covered by module 10. Um, in this module, we are going to explain the concept of the water usage effectiveness and uh, how can we improve the WUE or water usage effectiveness of our data center. Um, we will also uh, go into the water usage at the power generation source eh, and how to use the energy water intensity factor. Here's an example on how to measure and calculate the water usage effectiveness of your uh, data center. Um, we will also address uh, the water usage at the source where the electrical power is generated uh, for your data center. Another environmental impact is actually caused by waste. Yeah. So we will talk about waste management, where we will give guidance on waste man management policies. Uh, we will go into life cycle assessment. We will also explain the three R's for waste management. And um, 
also the second-hand market for IT equipment is part of this module 11. Um, in this slide, we are explaining the concept of the full life cycle assessment of all the components of the data center, eh? actually from the cradle to the grave. Um, we will also explain the necessity eh, uh, to re reduce waste, reuse items, and of course, recycle items. Eh? Uh, people call this the three R principle. Um, module 12, I think it's a very important one because this addresses the sustainable energy usage. Um, uh, we will identify the various sustainable energy sources. Um, we are also going into the concepts of power purchase agreed, uh, uh, agreements. We will talk about energy attribute certificate and what they actually are. Uh, we are also going to, uh, to learn you how to calculate the renewable energy factor of your data center and examples are given how to match uh, renewable energy supply and the, 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 the demand by using sustainable energy storage systems. And of course, uh, we will also uh, cover carbon trading in this module. Um, so in CDESS, uh, we are going to explain the concept of energy attribute cer certificates and energy attribute certificates. They can have actually different names or terms in various parts of, of the world. But obviously, we will go into that in great detail. Um, during the training, uh, we will also give multiple examples uh, uh, how to calculate the renewable energy factor of your data center. Module 13 will go into the automated environmental management systems. Um, here we'll, we'll uh, address the use of artificial intelligence, uh, but also machine le uh, learning in a data center facilities environment. We will explain the advantage of IT load mi migration and the role of data center infrastructure management solution or DCIM solutions when it comes to environmental sustainability. Um, CDESS also addresses the use of artificial intelligence and its role in improving sustainability where it will allow data center managers to fine tune their energy uh, consumption. And as a result, this should obviously reduce the carbon footprint of the data center. Um, and we will also show, show you some examples where the migration of IT load can improve the environmental sustainability for your data center operations. Well, uh, this was also the last module of CDESS. Um, so um, this also ends at least the slide presentation of the sneak peek of our CDESS training. Uh, further details on this training can be found <clears throat> on our company's website using the URL that is actually given on the slide, eh? www.epi-ap.com slash CDESS. I really hope that you have enjoyed this sneak peek of the Certified Data Center Environmental Sustainability Specialist course, and I'm looking very much to meet you uh, during one of our trainings. Yeah, um, I give the floor back to Dean. Otto, thanks. That was fantastic as always. Um, we've actually had quite a few questions that have come through too, which is fantastic to see. I'll start with the first question that actually came through from Joost. Um, he asked if an expired CDCP, CDCS or CDCE a certificate is valid to still attend the CDESS course and exam. 
Well, if they have already an expired CDCP certificate, they could do the CDESS training. Yeah, uh, because uh, we do go into technical details, but those people who did maybe CDCP five five years ago, uh, they most probably still work in the facilities uh, environment, and uh, that should not be a major issue. Thanks for that, Otto. And I think to expand upon that just a little bit, I think the reason why we require or request that people have gone through the CDCP as a minimum is so that we understand that they've got a strong foundational understanding of the data center and a data center environment. Um, it's always a good idea to be up to date with your certifications if you can be, but really it's just making sure that you get the most value from the course itself by having you know, the requisite um, background and, and understanding of the material that we'd actually be, be running you through. The next question came from uh, Chun. Um, he asked if the course will be conducted online um, or at local authorised training centres. Um, I can answer that. Look, the training will be conducted online um, through our TOD platform, which you can find at EPI Academy. Um, it's available on our website. You can also complete the courses with uh, virtual instructor-led training, um, where we deliver live instructor classes virtually. Um, and one of our trainers like Otto would take you through uh, the course and the material and prepare you for the exams. We, ask, we also do offer in-classroom training. Um, the issue with in-classroom training tends to be that we need to have large classes to accommodate students, um, but all three options are available. Uh, the next question we got was from uh, Run. Run said, can you please explain the fee structure and is the exam included with the training? Um, yes. So look, we have our fees are based on a regional pricing model. And the reason for this is certain regions have just a different pricing um, based on local purchasing power. So it's always best to reach out to your local partner or, or, or local EPI office um, for a quotation on the training if you're interested in it. But we do include exam fees uh, in the courses when we quote. So that is something that is included. Um, we got another question from William. Is the training imparted in a virtual classroom or on demand um, that we covered? Is the cost the same? Look, the, the virtual delivery is slightly more expensive than the EPI Academy training uh, if it's delivered over video. So there is a cost saving. The benefit with virtual environments is that you obviously have access to the instructor immediately if you had any questions. If it's something that you're doing through video instruction, you would need to send the questions through to us and we would respond to you uh, when we get to them. Um, we had a question from Adele. Um, it was a great question, actually. Is the course covering economic aspects that could justify sustainability investments for existing infrastructure? I believe it's a criti critical aspect, especially for existing data centers. Adele, that is a great question. It's not something we cover in the CDSS um, at the moment. What we tend to focus on is purely the technical aspects from an operational perspective. So we don't cover the financial aspects. That is something that tends to come um, more from the initial planning around the design and the construction of the data center itself. So I think where you would get the most value if this is of concern is to look at the CDCP, the CDCS and the CDCE training. Um, we're based on best practice design that could be provided by EPI. Um, you would be armed with the right tools and knowledge to design the sustainable data center. So. We also run through, particularly with the CDCE, which is our most advanced engineering certification, uh, numerous business cases where the students can you know, bounce ideas off trainers like Otto and understand how these facilities are planned and designed to be constructed. Um, and sustainability is something that would be covered through that too, um, a little more these days. From the financial perspective, look, on the commercial side, we don't get too involved in that. Um, but it is something that we're looking to do in the future. If it's something you're interested in, please drop us an email. Um, let us know a little bit more about the requirement or the potential challenge you might be facing. And we'll see if that isn't something we can assist you with. Um, asked a question, what are the core competencies and knowledge areas that a CDESS should master in order to excel in the exam? Otto, that's probably best answered by you, I think. 
Well, the core competencies is, of course, an uh, uh, an uh, engineering background. Uh, it, it, it is actually quite a technical uh, uh, training. And um, what you actually do is you are going to deepen uh, the knowledge on the um, effects of uh, implementing uh, systems uh techniques to re reduce the uh, energy consumption in the data center. So um, we will also discuss a little bit about environmental management, uh, but, um, uh, well, it is more or less a technical training. Um, Ujwal uh, Singh said RECs are not an actual sustainable way to go for green energy. I guess that's more of a, a comment. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ujwal also had another comment. Ujwal also had another comment. So I'll let that you is, both, there are a lot of uh, uh, discussions about RRECs. Uh, okay. It is just actually a tool, a tool uh, to put yourself in the market uh, to uh, well present you as a, a company that uses re renewable energy. However, in the in the real practice, you might actually run energy that is coming from a coal power plant, but you just have a certificate that you have traded for money, obviously. Uh, Ujwal also had another question for us. He said, look, we hadn't addressed building and construction approaches, landscaping, occupant health, indoor quality, etc." No, we are not uh, going into the uh, social uh, uh, sustainability. Thanks. Uh, Ivan uh, had a question. He said, my role in data centers is the design and construction stage, including lead bream. Do you think the CDESS is relevant? Yes. <laughs> very, nice short, short <laughs> <laughs> very short answer yes uh, of course lead and bream uh, they are uh, more or less uh, uh, ways uh, to look at the design of buildings and obviously also data centers and i think uh, there will be some aspects uh, that uh, uh, are addressed in the CDCS that can actually be very helpful in your work. Um, Kwan Hua Pua said, will this course explain also how the green data centers align with ESG direction and ESG scoring purposes? No, ESG is not yet covered in uh, the CDESS, uh, most probably in uh, uh, next year's version. Had another question from Alana. Um, is the sustainability contents based on US LEED certification, Otto? No, we are mainly uh, looking at the ISO uh, standards. Um, we had another question from Adele. Um, what about mapping of different carbon emission scopes, one, two, and three, within the data center value chain? Is it evaluated during the training? Yes, we are going in detail in uh, for scope one, two, and, and three, where we do actually exercises and mapping of the various carbon emissions that you need to take into account. And uh, we will also uh, give examples of what parts of the scope three emissions are potentially important or uh, useful for your data center environment. Perfect. Um, Malika had another question for us. She said, how do we map the financial implications for implementing solutions and systems that we learn from this course? Um, well, <laughs> I would say <laughs> measure the energy usage of your data center before and and <laughs> after and see yeah. how much electricity you are saving now i'm i'm joking but that is of course uh, depending uh, uh, of course on what you are going to use in your own uh, environment uh, be aware that it is not only uh, gaining financial profit 
by uh, implementing uh, um, environmental sustainability in your data center, but it also has to do with an um, improvement of your business reputation. And actually more important, uh, many countries, eh, almost every country has uh, undersigned the uh, Paris uh, agreement, uh, many countries, they will come up with more and more regulations that are actually re required to be implemented in your data center. Eh? There are for Europe, there will be starting next year, uh, specific re requirements for environmental reporting for data centers when they have an IT load of uh, 100 kilowatt and above. You just had uh, one other question. You said, sorry, I meant the ISO 14001. Um, okay, we are going to address the ISO 14001. Uh, that, is all, that is also, uh, that is actually also a framework defined by, by ISO, which is very often uh, implemented at corporate level. But we do have a few slides and we will also explain uh, the, 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 I would say the advantages and the limits of the ISO 14001 during the training. Perfect. Thanks, Otto. Um, we had another question from Ahmed. Um, he asked us, what is the relationship between a certified data center, environmental and sustainability specialists, and an ESG social and governance, and ESG environmental social and governance, particularly in the context of corporate sustainability? and data center operations. Um, so really a question about the certification and ESG again. Because to be honest, I do not know actually the scope of the ESG certification. Uh, be aware, however, that those ESG certification, they will have, of course, a much wider scope. And yeah. here we are focusing on the purely the data center uh, environment uh, to a level of detail which obviously might not be achieved by the EST certification. Correct. I think it's important to stress because this is a common question that's popped up is that ESG is more about corporate sustainability rather yeah. than just the technical sustainability of the data center. The data center is one element or aspect of a larger corporate entity. Um, so really it comes down to, you know, all sorts of things with ESG, things like, um, you know, d diversity hiring um, beyond just environmental. This is purely about environmental sustainability. Um, so while it's relevant to ESG and it's going to be something that I think will be a governance requirement and some pressure on operators to adhere to um, by following the, the, the framework, I guess, provided by the CDSS, you are addressing it indirectly. Um, Suck Tavil had another one. He said over 41% of electricity consumed by cooling systems. Will the course cover in detail the future ready cooling systems to reduce power consumption? Yes. <laughs> yes, we will do, uh, surely. Yeah. And actually, um, when you have 41% uh, of your electrical energy used just for cooling of, of the data center, I think you can achieve a lot of uh, Im improvements. Um, of course, it depends very much on the climate where your uh, data center is located in. Eh? Of course, in a tropical country, uh, you will st still need more uh, energy for cooling compared to... Uh, a, a data center that might be located in Scandinavia. Um, Abdel, Abdel Salam, he said, does the course cover how industry and standards address the sustainable plated green plated solutions? In other words, no. those options that apparently look like sustainable energy, but in reality, they're generated from non-sustainable sources, for example, hydrogen. That's a good question. Well, of course, uh, hydrogen could be a sustainable source, assuming that renewable energy is used to produce hydrogen. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but of course, we will also go into greenwashing, as they call it, eh? uh, uh, boosting the uh, 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 environmental performance of a data center by just, uh, well, 
uh, well, we already mentioned the uh, renewable energy cer certificates, which is under a lot of uh, the, the, the discussion, but also uh, people who are measuring the PUE of a data center uh, during the winter time. And they say this is our average PUE, but it is actually the PUE uh, when it is, was a very cold, cold day. So just to actually attract maybe customers for a commercial data center. Thanks for that, Otto. Uh, Prem had a question. Does EPI support its attendees for job find, job searches or providing references? Prem, no. Um, look, we don't, we don't assist with recruitment. Um, or provide direct references. However, look, the certifications are internationally recognized. You'll often find that employers um, stipulate it as a requirement for employment for certain roles. We also see a lot of it with tender um, and RFIs that you see going out where there's a requirement that a certain number of individuals within an organization have some of our certifications um, you know, completed and staff members have gone through some of our training. So. It's always advantageous to go through the training. It will provide you with, um, you know, some some opportunity in future. Mohammed G Sands asks, CDSS comes under which track? Operation building. It's under operations, Mohammed. Um, so we view it as part of the operations uh, disciplines. Um, there was a question from Mohammed Rafiq. He said, if there's no industry-wide standards yet for sustainability, how can we maintain the data center sustainably? And who fixes, I guess, or what he means by that is who decides the parameters, Otto? Okay, that is actually a quite yeah. a good thing. Um, well, actually, uh, most countries, they have um, actually uh, signed the Paris Agreement uh, to um, uh, reduce uh, global warming or to stop actually global warming. Um, and what we see, this is translated to many um different local regulations and local re requirements yeah so um actually uh, i think about uh, last last year a country like singapore they actually uh, re require a certain maximum pwe uh, before you can even get an um, a building permit to build a data center. So you actually need to uh, design your data center already on a certain per, per, uh, energy efficiency performance or uh, sustainability performance. What we will see is that those local or in Europe, those European regulations, they will come up or are already there. And obviously they will also be uh, enforced. However, in the training, we are going to address, for instance, ISO 30134, which actually tells you how to report and measure those KPIs. However, the actual value of the KPIs, they will set out by your local or regional authorities. What are the differences, Otto, between EPI, CNET and the Uptime Institute from a training perspective? The big thing with, with EPI specifically is that we're very discipline focused. So if you look at the way we structure our courses, we're not broadly focused. We focus on specific disciplines that are quite relevant to the job roles that people have within an organization. So what we're providing is very practical uh, industry training that is based on a global standard. Um, when you look at the process that we have to go through, as EPI, which is a certification body, uh, the TIA standard is effectively one that is agreed to by industry, um, you know, professionals, a committee process that's 150 plus that goes through a massive peer review process before they, they modify or update the standard. So we're getting, you know, industry input from around the world on the standard and how we should be building and designing these, these facilities. Um, and that then also goes through a public peer review process, um, after which the standard is finalized and released. And EPI provides certification against that standard. Our training is built around that particular framework. So what we do by providing training around that framework, we make it applicable to people within their respective fields. And if you've got, you know, engineering is something that you're focused on, we have the disciplines and the training specifically for that. Likewise, with operations, risk and compliance, 
um, and so forth. So that's the big differentiator. I think it's the fact that it's not just broad training that we've, we've kind of fucked from our sum. It's actually based on standards like the TIA standards, ISO standards, best practice standards that are approved by global bodies and recognized industry institutions. It's not just training that we think is applicable based on how EPI would like to build a data center. We follow best practice standards uh, based on international standards. And that obviously um, has an impact on how we put our, our courses together and how we deliver our courses. Look, um, I guess we can wrap up. Um, again, thank you to everyone who attended today. Paige, thanks for, for arranging this. Otto, thanks again for another fantastic presentation. Again, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to us or our partners. We'd be happy to provide um, some one-on-one -on -one presentations or run you through any other questions you, you may have. Um, so with that, thanks a lot.